Welcome to episode 42 of Let's Hear It. Today's guest is Oliver Wood. He's in the band The Wood Brothers, which, as the name implies, is with his brother Chris. And John O'Ricks plays uh, percussion and keyboards and an instrument called a shitar, <laughs> which at some point we're going to have to get him on here to show us all about that. Uh, the Wood Brothers have been putting records out since about 2006, I believe, and uh, starting to get really popular, selling out lots of shows, playing great shows. And uh, if you've seen them, you know that Oliver has a, quite a great collection of guitars, um, vintage guitars. He's got an awesome national. Today he's going to show us his 1965 Guild T100D. Uh, these are sometimes called the Slim Jim because it's a semi-hollow guitar with a very thin body. And uh, this particular one he's going to show us was made in Hoboken, New Jersey, when the Guild factory was over there. It's uh, right across the river from where I am. And uh, let's say hello to Oliver Wood. Hello, Oliver. Hello, Gary. Thanks for having me today, me and the Guild. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Um, you guys, uh, you guys uh, you've uh, put out an album earlier this year called Kingdom in My Mind, which has one of my favorite songs of the year, uh, a little bit sweet. It's a great song and lots of other good tunes on there. And I think you have a reissue on vinyl out of your album, The Muse. Well, is that correct? Yeah, it's in production right now. So it's, but yeah, we're reissuing the album, The, the Muse, which is probably around the time I met you, actually, if I, if I think. Right. Nice. And you're, you're, uh, and you guys are doing a web stream where you play that complete album. Is that on December 18th? Correct. Correct. Yes. Excellent. And you've also released a couple solo tunes this year. You've obviously been busy. Yeah, well, uh, you know, an unusual amount of free time without touring uh, taking up most of my time as it usually does. I've been home and able to spend more time than usual writing and, and in the studio and uh, being creative. And uh, so why not, you know? I'm sure everyone yeah, else everyone. is doing that too. Yeah, I, I think that's been one of the uh, weird benefits for musicians who travel all year usually now you're now you're home with all this time so you can yeah. learn new stuff on your instruments record and uh yeah. you know you guys have put out some great little web stream videos that i've seen as well yeah there's plenty of time for all that stuff getting to know your wife and kids you know it's kind of kind of cool that's, that's important as well yeah um so tell me about like so you have a great collection of guitars every time i see you uh, playing something, I'm always like, ah, oh, look at that little I've Epiphone, got a few. I've you've got, got a awesome few. National, which you get a great sound of, but tell us about this, uh, this Guild T100. So this Guild T100, I got it back, I believe, in the early to mid-90s, maybe mid-90s, and at the time, and you can see it's kind of a thin, hollow body, this is a T100D, so it has two pickups, and it has these weird, uh, and cool sort of cheapo uh, single coil pickups, I believe, made by DeArmond. And uh, and I, I actually saw a Guild book somewhere that at the factory they called them Mickey Mouse pickups just because they're so chintzy, I guess, or cheap. But um, So when I got this guitar, I had a Strat, and so it seemed like everybody else had a Strat too, and everybody was playing Stevie Ray Vaughan licks and... Uh, and I, I got the feeling that, wow, how am I gonna, you know, I'm not even gonna, I'm not doing this as well as everybody else. What can I do that's gonna be my thing? Uh, or let me just stretch out and do something different, take me out of that box. Um, so I was, I was actually teaching guitar lessons at a, a used guitar store and this came through and I fell in love with it. Um, and I liked that it had the single coils, but I also liked that you could sort of hear the hollowness of it. Um, I used to play, uh, my, my old band was called King Johnson and we were a six piece band. It was kind of loud. I played a big uh, uh, Fender Super reverb, pretty much cranked up. And this thing just sounded so good through that. And th the issue I'd have is it would feed back. And sometimes it was perfect feedback and sometimes it was a little bit much. So I, at one point I had some old tidy whities like these underwear and I stuffed them in there and they would always be poking out just a little bit. and it, it was always a good conversation piece, you know, people are like, what's that in your guitar, that underwear? And, and uh, but it, it was, you know, I would joke, but it was part of the tone was just like what I stuffed in there. 
which was either a, a either old <laughs> underwear or it was like a washcloth from a hotel room or something to keep it to, to keep the feedback sort of right at a medium level um, but what I loved about it is it made me play different and it made me sort of find my own voice on guitar I feel like uh, whereas when I had the Strat I was sort of just imitating a lot of other people or emulating so um, anyway it's kind of the story of this thing it has a replaced um, usually it just has a wooden bridge so I, somebody when I got it had already put a bridge like a, a tunematic style bridge and um, so that's kind of kind of been important, but uh, but otherwise it's just a dirty old thing that I and it's and it's exactly my age too. It's born the same year as me, so something about that's that. Great, about, yeah. Were you ever tempted to put a uh, Bigsby on it? I've seen some pictures of of some that had Bigsby's put on it. Uh, I was never tempted to do that. I've seen some of those. Some of those are Starfires, I think, which are which are a lot like this, and some of you know those would have a. Uh, centerpiece through the inside but this one's completely hollow so um but uh no i never was i, I wouldn't mind having another one that had that that'd be kind of cool hmm. do you know why they call it the slim jim is it just as simple as it's a very thin line body I, I don't know i don't know it's maybe it's kind of one of those nickname things like the the mickey mouse pickup you know it might be just that who was jim no one else who was jim and was he actually a big guy <laughs> well, maybe he was a slim guy, but sometimes like they call Slim Jim yeah, because he's yeah. gigantic. Exactly, exactly. One of those <laughs> ironic names. Yeah. yeah. I like that thing. Um, the couple solo songs you released, where, how did that come about? And why would you um, release a couple solo tunes? Obviously, because you've got time on your hands as well. But was there something that you wanted to do a little bit different from? A well, I think one thing that just... Uh, with the Wood Brothers break, or at least the touring aspect of the Wood Brothers, gave me a lot of free time. And, you know, there's always, uh, when you're in a band for a long time, and the Wood Brothers are 15 years old now, uh, at least, um, you know, you, you develop a sound and get into a groove with your bandmates and certain uh, certain things, certain songs. There might be songs that I've always wanted to do that I couldn't do in that in that format, or people I wanted to collaborate with. Um, another great guitar player that I collaborated with for my the, one of the singles that I put out a few months ago, Phil Cook, um, out of Durham, North Carolina, and he's he's just somebody that I really admire, and always we wanted to collaborate, so we got together and wrote a couple songs together, and. Um, so that's the thing I've been enjoying. And I've actually since recorded almost a whole album worth, so I'm gonna release a bunch more stuff. And some of it's stuff that I just wrote and I had uh, John O'Ricks come and help me uh, produce some of it and some of it's collaborations with other people that I've always wanted to collaborate with. Um, and uh, so it's kind of a hodgepodge, but it is kind of just getting out of the Wood Brothers box and trying some other stuff while I have time, because normally I have no time for that. and I'm. And I'm happy just being doing Wood Brothers stuff. So nice, uh, Phil Cook. I think he lives in Woodstock, New York now. Uh, not that I know, but you could be right. For all I know, I've, it's been six months since I talked to him. So. I think he does. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think he may, or maybe he was living there for a little bit. But uh, well, uh, let's hear what this guitar sounds like. To, uh, show yeah. us what you love about it. So I'll tell you what. One thing that that I've. Uh, learned about this guitar of course go, going through like a clean like i love it through a champ or something like us i'm really into small amps um so small amps sort of bring out the the dirt a little bit in a way that i that i just enjoy the most so um so that the one amp that i really got into and i think that sort of has become the wood brothers guitar sound for me is is called a k703 it also comes in 503 and 803 i think tiny little four watt amp um, and uh, on stage I usually combine that with like a bigger amp like a Princeton or something and then just blend the sounds together um, today I'm playing through a little uh, Kent uh, Kent amp which is kind of in that ballpark and it's sort of uh, uh, here it's kind of Love the 
tremolo. Love the uh, love the dirt on it. Um, but what's cool about this guitar is you can sort of on the on the uh, neck pickup. You can get sort of a front strat pickup sound. And then on the, the uh, back pickup, Freddie King, aggressive, spiky oh, yeah. kind of thing. I was was a big fan of uh, Albert Collins and Freddie King and some of those really ice pick kind of sounds that are kind of piercing. So, um, but somehow with these little amps, it's it's a little more forgiving. <laughs> Those are the things I really love about it. I love how versatile it is. The, the, the two pickups. It can kind of be mellow and um, a little bit telly-like, but, but I always find that it never quite sounds like a Fender. And I have nothing against Fender guitars. I love their sound and they're so classic. But for me, this guitar really helped me to just, I don't know, feel like, oh, this is a little bit different it's in a subtle way. It's kind of um, something that maybe not as many people are playing, and that made me feel a little more unique, so. Well, it has a nice grit coming through there, and so, like, I could I could tell, like, kind of like the, you mentioned Albert Collins, so I was actually thinking that, that kind of biting trebly sound that you got, and then, obviously, you have a rounder sound there, too. Yeah. I don't know if that was the two mixed pickups together a little of both but maybe the roundest is that uh that that uh front pickup just uh, doesn't have any more <laughs> any more headroom to it and uh, that's yeah. part of it I mean that's really a big a big thing but I will say lately I've gotten really into just playing it clean through a champ which is also small but has a lot more headroom than a little amp like this I like the amps that are almost like a little toy <laughs> there's kind of like yeah. a toy amp that's sort of pawn shoppy and semi broken you know did you ever play through uh, any of the little Gibson amps love the Gibson amps too yes absolutely the G, yeah. like the G45, which is a bigger, bigger one, but I always like the Falcon. I actually bought a couple of uh, Epiphone amps from the same era that are basically, I think, the same thing. Um, uh, a lot of the Sweet. Epiphone amps of that era are kind of exact copies and probably built by uh, yeah. the same people. So Nice. Uh, um, hard to, uh, you've been playing guitar for a long time, hard to say, like, you know, but... Who would you say a couple of your main influences are on guitar? Um, boy, I would say, um, oh, that was the air conditioner going on, sorry everybody. Um, I would say definitely, so for electric guitar, like all the Kings, you know, Freddie, BB, Albert King, um, and uh, Albert Collins was a big, I remember when I was a freshman in college, I saw Albert King, I mean, Albert Collins play live and uh, that was that was super influential to me. And around the same time, I also saw like Los Lobos, like early Los Lobos, mm -hmm. uh, when they were sort of breaking out. And uh, loved you know both of those guitar players, um, David Hidalgo and Cesar. Those guys, I, I always loved them. Um, mm. Love. I learned a lot from Taj Mahal, and he sort of led me to. Um, to check out people like uh, Mississippi John Hurt and Elizabeth Cotton and um, you know some of those songs that he would cover uh, for acoustic stuff and, and finger picking stuff. Uh, love that kind of sort of uh, blues finger style um, 
stuff. So, uh, yeah. Reverend Gary Davis and, uh, um, and then, you know, as far as like, uh, I, of course I was always into as a kid, Beatles and Hendrix and Zeppelin and all the, uh, all the heavy stuff of sixties and seventies. I, I loved, um, and then I think i some of my real favorites are like New Orleans guys, like Snooks Eaglin. Are you afraid of Snooks Oh, yeah, Snooks of course. Eaglin? I mean, that's kind oh, yeah. of my guy. He's sort of like um, in, in the same, like Ray Charles. I'm a huge fan of Ray Charles, who's not a guitar player. But to yeah. me, Snooks Eaglin does what Ray Charles did, but with guitar in terms of bringing together all the different American music. Like he could play anything. He's a street musician and, uh, yeah. and you know, knew, knew how to play jazz, blues, funk. Um, and uh, sort of just mix it all together, gospel, and uh, so I love I love that kind of stuff. Another another guy is J. B. Lenore. Love J. B. Lenore. Um, Joseph Spence. Uh, yeah. Bahamian. Slack key. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so most of the stuff I like is kind of rootsy, and uh, I'm a big R Mark Rebo fan. Uh, I kind of like his approach because he always. No matter what he's doing, he, it sounds really classic and honest to me. So, uh, as far as guys that are still doing it, I really like him. Nice. Right, well, that's that's a great list of yeah. uh, of musicians to to learn from. So, uh, if you feel like playing a song, play a song. Uh, yeah, I'll play a little mini song here. Um, let's see. What about? Well, this is a song that that. Uh, so I'll, I'll put, go like this. Uh, I love that finger picking stuff. And one of the things that I got excited about too was some little bit of African guitar uh, where they play these old cheap guitars that are usually acoustic guitars with a capo up high. So, um, so I was really, I'm gonna play just a little piece of a couple things if that's all right. Um, so I got into to Mississippi John Hurt first and learned stuff like, um, like, Mixing the acoustic kind of stuff with a just nasty, horrible guitar sound, and um, great. so uh, a nice little crunch going. A there. little crunch and, going. Uh, so I'll I just show the, you. I can hear the Mississippi John licks, but when you when you do them on that guitar with a little a gritty sound like that, that's great. Yeah, it gives a little di different, just a different take on the same thing. But mm. um, so uh, this is an original uh, Wood Brothers song, and I'll just play some of it, but. I got into the electric stuff where, um, excuse me, the African stuff where they'd capo up high like this. So I have a capo on the seventh fret. And, uh... So on. 
Um, but I like those kind of finger picking things up high too, where the where the chords get smaller. A little more like a mandolin uh, sound, or at least uh, what do you call it? Sort of range, you know? Yeah, so. it's great. Well, thanks, man. I really Thank appreciate you. you coming on, and uh, I love that. I love that sound. I'm, I'm jealous of that kind of gritty sound, and I, I need a little amp. I need electric guitar. I've been living in New York City for the last 15 years, so I mainly just play acoustic Thank instruments. Yeah. yeah, a couple times I've cranked up electric guitars on them, getting bang banging on my door. And yeah, stuff. yeah. Well, you got to get the the ridiculously small amp, maybe. I need a Tom Schultz Rockman. A Rockman, ah, oh, the classic. <laughs> that classic. I used to have one. I think I did too. I think I did too. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Oliver. Gary, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I look forward to seeing you guys play when uh, the world is back to normal. Likewise. And, uh, and I'll watch that web stream on December 18th. I'm looking forward to that. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right.